Can I be a diamond dog? <gasps> hey everybody and welcome to another movie night. I'm Jackie and today we are watching Ted Lasso season 3 episode 12 this series finale. I'm not ready. I'm not okay. This episode is an hour and 15 minutes long. I think this is the longest episode of the entire series, and it is called So Long, Farewell, Auf Wiedersehen, Adieu. Couldn't help it. Definitely a Sound of Music reference, if we know the Ted Lasso writers. <sighs> I can't believe we're here. As far as this finale, I don't have a whole lot of predictions. I think Ted going home is a foregone conclusion. I don't think we can even call that a prediction at this point. I think that's just a foregone conclusion. As far as how this is going to end, I've always stood by that I believe we're gonna get a Pixar ending. I think that this is going to be very bittersweet, very emotional. We're going to have a happy ending, but it's not the happy ending you expect. So I've always stood by that that's the kind of ending we're gonna get, and I still think that's gonna be the case. We have quite a few storylines to wrap up. I think the main ones, obviously, is Ted going home. Rebecca, we just at the end of the last episode saw Bex and Miss Cakes, Miss Corporate Pixie Dream Girl, on her doorstep. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to assume that something is going to happen with Rupert in this episode. We have Nate officially coming back to Richmond after Beard gave him a job and said his life is up to him. That was a hell of a reveal. That was an incredible reveal as far as Beard's backstory. And it doesn't surprise me at all. And I think it fits really well. And it really does explain why he would follow Ted anywhere. And I wouldn't be surprised particularly after that reveal, if we do see Beard stay in England. I've kind of had that in the back of my mind that that might happen, particularly because of Jane and because he really, really does seem to fit here. He really enjoys it here. And having that reveal of his backstory kind of felt like showing us how dependent he's been on Ted for a long time and how indebted to him he felt. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get a departure here where Beard decides he's gonna stand on his own two feet and he's gonna choose his own life because he said Ted gave him a job, he gave him a life, and I wouldn't be surprised if we now see Beard decide he's gonna live his life his way apart from Ted. I wouldn't be surprised by that. So I'm not gonna call that a prediction, but I could see it happening. As far as Roy and Keeley, we definitely have set up a potential reconciliation. They had a conversation in the last episode about the fact that Roy didn't want to be just friends. Keeley did not 100% rebuff him, but she did not say yes 100%. So that, I wouldn't be surprised if we get something a little bit open-ended, maybe a hint of something. I don't know if we're gonna get a wedding proposal in this episode, but we will definitely get some sort of resolution to that question. I also have a feeling between Sam and Rebecca, there will be some sort of resolution, whether it's open-ended, whether it's concrete, I think there will be something. As far as Ted and Rebecca, you guys, if you've watched me for a while, you know how I feel about that ship, and I respect everyone's rights to their own ships. It's a very personal thing, and I do understand shipping Ted and Rebecca. I really do, because one, Jason Sudeikis and Hannah Waddingham have excellent chemistry, as does everyone on this show. I think that's a huge, huge factor as why this show is so successful is that the entire cast has amazing chemistry together. And Jason Sudeikis and Hannah Waddingham absolutely do, but they also play the leads. They play number one and number two on the call sheet, as we would call them. This is an ensemble cast, but if you had to sort of say, these are the leads, it would definitely be those two. Ted is our protagonist, is his name on the show and Rebecca started out as our primary antagonist, and I would call her sort of a secondary protagonist. If there's one character that we see the most outside of Ted, it would definitely be Rebecca. And so it's easy to assume that those two people would wind up together. It's really not hard to understand that, and they definitely have, I don't wanna say mom and dad energy, but again, there, there's that sort of like parental thing. I don't know, you want mom and dad to be happy. You want them to, to end up together. There's just, it's that parent trap idea. Just, we want them to be together, I don't know. But as far as them actually ending up together, just from a writing standpoint, this is not a personal shipping standpoint, regardless of how I feel, just from a writing standpoint, I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm saying that straight up, I don't think it's gonna happen. It would be, objectively speaking, 
terrible writing to put them together in the finale for many, many reasons. One, because I think their personalities would clash. I think they have great sibling energy, a little bit more of a personal thing. But also, as far as writing goes, we've had nothing to set that up. We've had absolutely nothing that would have to happen in good writing to set up something like that. The Ted Lasso writers are not Benioff and Weiss. They're not gonna throw something at you at the very, very end that makes no sense just for the sake of subverting your expectations. They have done an excellent job of setting up everything throughout this show to give us the payoff we want at the end. And so for them to throw this ship in there at the very end without any of the markers, without any of the moments of setup that you would need for something like that, the conversations, the the looks, the cuts away, just so many elements in the writing and the shooting of the show that would suggest something like that. Those things just aren't there. So I will be shocked. I will be absolutely shocked if they put Ted and Rebecca together because I just don't see any reason that that would happen. I don't see anything in the writing. I don't see anything in the show that would hint that that is actually going to happen. Now, there were a couple comments on the last episode about Sleepless in Seattle and that being a parallel to things. I fully admit, I've never seen Sleepless in Seattle for a very, very silly reason that I fully acknowledge that when I was younger, You've Got Mail was my Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, Nora Ephron movie. And for whatever reason, me in my youth, <laughs> my childhood when I first saw that movie, decided that it was the only one I wanted to love. And if I saw Sleepless in Seattle, which people said was fantastic, then it would potentially threaten my love for You've Got Mail. And I just couldn't stand that. And I know that that's ridiculous, but that was just my, my sort of childhood thought process. And I never actually got around to watching Sleepless in Seattle. So I will at some point, but for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to say I haven't seen it and I did not go and look through the specifics because I didn't want to ruin it for myself for the future. But that being said, even throwing in a casual reference like that at the very end here, I don't think that's enough to support a Ted and Rebecca ship. That's my personal thought process and I stand by it. The only other thing that I think I almost hope that we touch on in this episode, but I actually don't think we will, is Zava and Shandy. Those were two characters that I will admit irk me a little bit in the way that they were included in this season. And I thought about it recently and it occurred to me why. And for reference, season one had 10 episodes, season two had 12 episodes, Apple ordered an extra two episodes. And so we got the Christmas episode and the beard episode, which are essentially bottle episodes. They don't do much as far as plot. There's very little that changes from the beginning to the end of the Christmas episode, the beginning to the end of the beard episode. It is just a fun bottle. I call them fever dream episodes where they just exist to fill time. They are filler, essentially. Fun filler, but filler. And I feel like because we had 12 episodes here, because there was that plan to do that, I wonder if including characters like Zava, including characters like Shandy are sort of this season's filler instead of doing individual filler episodes, they included a few plot lines that maybe weren't 100% necessary because yes, having Zava allowed Richmond to have a handful of more wins than they would have had otherwise, that's great. Shandy allowed Keely to learn when it is and is not appropriate to employ your friends. But as far as furthering the overall plot of the show, they didn't really do much. And so my theory up to this point, especially if we don't see them again, is they were the Christmas episode and beard episode of this season. That's sort of my theory. But as far as this episode, it's the finale. I can't wait to see how they wrap things up for everyone. And I don't know, I'm gonna be emotional. I'm gonna be emotional. I'm just, I'm not ready for this. I'm absolutely not ready for this. I'm excited for it, but I can't imagine Ted Lasso being over. I just gonna be beautiful and I'm gonna be sad and it's gonna be bittersweet and yeah I just I wanted to do a, a little bit of a revisit of this final season and just say how much I have appreciated the payoff that they've given us up to this point of all of the callbacks all the storylines all the character growth I know you guys make fun of me every single time <laughs> Oh, you're making a drinking game or something about the fact that I just say growth over and over and over again, but that's just the hallmark of this season is absolutely incredible, phenomenal character growth, especially from one Jamie Tart. If Phil Dunster does not get an Emmy for this, 
oh, there is no justice. This is the season of Phil Dunster's Emmy and I will lead the charge, absolutely. I hope we see Sassy and Nora again. I'm so sad we haven't seen Nora this whole season. I really, really love her. I think she's wonderful. But anyway, I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm delaying the inevitable. If I don't watch this, it won't be over. I'm not ready for it to be over. <sighs> but I, just, I had to get this all out before I watched this, get my final thoughts out, purge them from my mind so I can just sit and enjoy this hour and 15 minute episode. <clears throat> all right, all right. No more stalling, no more faffing about, no more procrastinating. Oh, procrastinating. That's a good word. Wonder what the etymology of that pro, pro, procrast. Have you got a dictionary? <laughs> Had to do it, sorry. <laughs> On that note, for those of you who are fans of The Shameless and you watch my original reactions with my friend Sam on my old channel, those are linked down below and we will be going back and watching them together. Sam has remarkably and hilariously managed to avoid spoilers. He actually has run out of restaurants hearing people next to him talking about Ted Lasso to avoid spoilers. So for those of you who want to check that out on my old channel, The Shameless, again, which is linked, we will be going back through and watching these together. Once this season is over, those will start popping up in the next couple of weeks. Hope you join us. On that note, as always, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the finale, on this series. Were you right? Did your predictions come true? How do you feel about it? I would love to know. Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button, depending on your browser. Check me out on Patreon for the full-length version of this reaction, as well as all of my other content, and Twitter and Instagram for other ways to follow. On that note, let's get into the finale. Rupert Mannion has been accused of an inappropriate relationship by a former assistant. Hmm. Oh, sh shut up, Terry. <laughs> oh, shut up, Terry Henry. Shut up, Terry Henry. Whoa, 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 what? No, no. Morning, Rebecca. Morning, Ted. What the fork? It's a misdirect. It's a misdirect. It's a forking misdirect. So do you, um, you know, do you want to talk about it? It's a misdirect. It's a misdirect. Good morning. Ha! It's a fork! <gasps> Forking misdirect! Boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a night Oh, weirdo beardo. Hey, thanks again for letting us all crash here last night. Yup. Boss don't want to talk about it yet. Mm. Yeah, yep. I told you it was a misdirect. She doesn't want to talk about him leaving. But I refuse to accept that you're not coming back. Yup. Called it. <laughs> Boss, I'm right there with you. He's staying. He's staying. <gasps> I'll start in the guest rooms. <laughs> the callbacks! No. No. No, no, no. no. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. The journey on purpose. <gasps> yeah! It was a forking misdirect. They had to give something to the shippers. They baited the shippers. I had that thought when we first saw her sitting in her kitchen. I'm like, who's gonna walk in? Somebody's gonna walk in. That was our last cold open. Hear ye, hear ye. All rise for the honorable judge, McAdoo. Yes, in costume. I would expect nothing less. Isaac, I love you. Always serving looks. You see. Uh, the assistant kit man has it. The assistant kit man with a box? Danny Rojas. Danny Rojas. Not texting happy birthday on a teammate's birthday. 100 pounds. Shame. Shame. I did put a heart on someone else's happy birthday. Doesn't count. Overrule. <laughs> I was just the only one who was snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. And finally, <laughs> he put an extra, didn't he? Nathan Shelley for missing every training session, every match, <gasps> and every team dinner this <gasps> season. Five thousand pounds. Oh! The party will now have an open bar and live band karaoke. <laughs> oh, that's so pure. That's so pure. 
are? Well, I'm not okay. Is Roy gonna show up behind? He's he's standing there, he's standing there, he's saying yes! <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to scare you. <laughs> Just ask me what I'm thinking about. Oh, no. <laughs> Stuff. Stuff. Terrifying. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good to see you, boy. Mm-hmm. Mm. She's making him work for it. Staring after her. Mm. My little shipper heart. Oh. Ghost. Interesting choice. Jane had a surprise for me. Mm -hmm. oh. oh dear. My passport, which she shredded <gasps> so that I wouldn't be able to leave the country. <gasps> I can't finish the book until the season ends, obviously. First draft? Let me know if there's anything you <gasps> disagree with. Oh, I knew that's what it was gonna be called. I forking knew it. <laughs> oh. Diamond dogs! Diamond dogs! How'd you know if a girl likes you or not? Diamond that might be a tasty little treat for the diamond dogs. Call it again. No. Yes. 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 Yes. He'll come around. The press are asking if you have any comments about Rupert's divorce. No comment. We started on his first divorce from Rebecca, now we're ending on his divorce from Bex. Leslie and I are asking if you have any comments on Rupert's divorce. <laughs> just genuinely don't care anymore. Well, I'm proud of you. Growth. We need to talk about who we're hiring to replace Ted. Mm hmm We really are bookending this series. She can't think about it, she can't do it. Right, I can't think no. about that yet. No. How much would I get if I sold the entire club? <gasps> no! You can't sell the club. Why not? Because it's your family now. Don't you dare. Whistle! <laughs> Whistle! <laughs> bring it in. Thank you, Roy. Coach and I didn't want to make a big deal about it being our last practice. Uh, did they choreograph a dance for him? What the fuck was that? <laughs> that. What the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. Yes! There's a side set of hanging Sound of music! Sound of music! <gasps> An absurd little bird is popping out to say cuckoo. Cuckoo. Oh my god! Say goodbye to you. This is literally the show's farewell. I'm gonna cry. So long, farewell. I'll be the same goodbye. We hate to go. And leave this pretty sight. Oh my god. Wait, who said Sound of Music was their favorite Julie Andrews movie? Adieu to you and you and you. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Oh my god, is Danny gonna be Gretel or whatever the, the littlest one's name was? Oh my god, they did headers. The sun has sun gone to bed, bed and so, so must I. I. I'm not okay. That was that perfect. Was it. Is he gonna ask her out? Uh, um, yeah, cool. Uh, so, someone from Night. Roy's watching! Uh, I smell sabotage! So, are you two friends now? Best friends. Uh, yeah, guess so. They are BFFs. Fucking men, yeah. <laughs> Please do tell her that she's a fraud that preys on people's weaknesses. <laughs> That's exactly what she said you'd say. I am so scared right now. 
Let's have the bill, thank you, May. <laughs> it's been taken care of uh, by these gentlemen. <gasps> Yeah, the love and care you have for the team is inspiring. Yes! Kind of like the mother we never had. Yes! Oh my god, they're her children! Tish's predictions always come true in odd ways. Okay. <gasps> he missed it so much. Darsteiner! Darsteiner, the favourite beer of Jamie Tart. Worth the wait. His beer bay. <laughs> my beer bay. Thank you for your help too, you know. I haven't really had that from older men in my life. Aww. Granddad. Are we going to address the elephant in the room? I know you got a lot of feelings for Keely. Yep, here we go. None of that shit ever gets in the way of our... Friendship? Friendship. Because you're best friends. Which means Keely started talking again. She's a woman, so you never know, right? Mm. Is she gonna pick neither of them? There's nothing official between the two of you. Are you two officially dating? No. No, but... Mm. It's happening. Mm. I think it's best if you just step aside. Subtle. Ah. No. <laughs> I was with her first. I was with her last. Ah. It's been a month. Mate. Oh. Ouch. This is uncomfortable. That video of her that got leaked. No, Jamie! She made that for me. No! What are you two doing? No! No! I'm ready to talk about it now. Awful lot like Roy and Ted in season one. This is what my ticket says. I've decided to sell the club. Rebecca. If you go, I go. What? There is another option. We both stay. I, uh, I'm scared. I can afford to make you one of the highest paid coaches in the league. <laughs> Ted's not motivated by money. I still think I'd be underpaying you for what you mean to this club. Aww. You already know your answer, don't you? Yeah. You know, I was thinking I should travel abroad. Uh, misdirect. Eat, pray, love style, right? Well, like drink, sleep, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, fuck of them. Hell. Oh my god. Oh my god. You gonna tell me what happened? Did you stop a mugging? Rescue some puppies from a burning building? <laughs> oh dear. We got in a fist fight over who gets to be with you. That's her choice. You should just pick. Oh no. You pick which one of us you want to end up with. So I get to choose? I mean, she always got to choose, but. This is so dumb. Oh, it's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! Ha! Yes! Atta girl, Keely! Are you fucking kidding me? We're fucking idiots. <laughs> oh, that same shot from West Ham. Can you just let me say it? Come on, Wonder Kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Aww. Vader has come back to the light. You only ripped it up once. Ah, I ripped I it up. I that sucker down and ripped it up two times. Yep. <laughs> So you're already in the clear, you know. Aww. Ted. Ted. Good night, Nate. Good night, Ted. Did you expect anything less from Ted? You're home.
homemade. It's always there in our hearts. Oh my God, it's game day. It is game day. And in the club's history, they've never- Oh my God, it's what's her name? It's Shannon, is that her name? From season one. It's Wanker. Oh my God, they're bringing everybody. It's the Titanic couple. They're bringing everybody. Wait, I want to see Mrs. Higgins. I want to see Mrs. Higgins. Hello. There should be a ticket waiting for you. <gasps> Colin's boyfriend. Aww. Thank you. <gasps> John Wayne's night. Friday night's Wings night. I'm actually nervous. Are you nervous? Yes. Who's ready to spend the next two hours of their lives watching this game until it eventually ends up in an exciting zero zero tie? <laughs> you know what? Fork you, Tesco value Ted. Yeah, Ted's getting back with his family. Dr. <gasps> Bray! championship and that one's called the champions league that don't make no sense <laughs> why money yeah okay see now that makes sense okay. yes that does make sense <laughs> step out and let you guys have a proper reunion da, 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 da. you stay put trend house magazine yes trend house magazine once you're in you can't ever leave can i be a diamond dog Like, where are the cameras? Are we being punked? <laughs> I'm not fucking around here. Right. Yeah, okay, uh, diamond dogs, mount up. Let's go. Yo, here we go. <laughs> Come on, Roy, you gotta bark. I have busted my fucking ass trying to change. I'm still me. Roy. Oh, no, I, I think people can change. Mm-hmm. Not me, I'm still the same fucking idiot I've always been. Oh, Roy. He just piped up out of nowhere and finally asked to become a diamond dog. Gross. Pretty big change, you ask me, right, fellas? Yep. The best we can do is to keep asking for help, and if you keep yeah. on doing that, you'll always be moving towards better. Wise words, Higgins. Nailed it! Add that right there to our list of perfect stuff. These are a few of my favorite things. Bravo, Higgins. <laughs> no. Woof. Ruff, ruff. Yes! I've got a girlfriend. <laughs> Her name is Jade, and she actually is perfect. Jaded. Jaded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss this. I'm not. Oh! Rupert! Rupert Palpatine! You guys ready? Don't you worry. I won't let you loose. Yet. Oh my god. He hired. I'm not going to say what Rebecca called him in the first episode, but he is. We have to oh acknowledge. God. Liam and Noel. Allegations of sexual oh my god, he's literally billowing. He's billowing. He's Palpatine. A win today could keep him in power a little bit longer. No, down with the Dark Lord. Down with the Sith! Oh, Rebecca. Mm. Sassy! Whatever happens today, a team you love wins. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Outclass them! Looks like you're gonna lose another team. <laughs> oh, God, you get through them like wives. <laughs> or I'm assuming tubes of hemorrhoid cream. <gasps> <laughs> I love you, Sassy. Yeah. Woo! Yay, Mrs. Higgins! We've just been sent a care package from Zava. Of course. I will not let him hurt me again. Oh, it's T-shirts. Can I have two, please? <laughs> My brothers. So, avocados, avocados, avocados! What, he sent us one avocado? Oh, my God. Holy guacamole. <laughs> Zavocados. I am sorry for destroying your face. A mask. Mask of Zorro. Mask of Zorro. Yeah. yeah. Ask Coach Beard here to help inspire and motivate y'all for our final match together. Oh dear. Oh boy.
Richmond appear to be crying. <laughs> Coach. <laughs> Ain't that right, Roy? <laughs> pigtails! Oh my gosh, she's got like Harley Quinn pigtails. That is very Harley Quinn. Trickery from Tart! The outside yeah. of his boots are <gasps> oh. Shoot. Well, something happened. Dude, shut up! Jamie Tart is going to carve West Ham up if they keep letting him. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Come on, Richmond! Keep calm and get fired up! Here we go! Keep calm and get fired up. That's funny. Keep calm and get fired up. Wasn't that a joke from the original sketch? Come on, Richmond! See, Rebecca, you can't leave! You love it too much! Oh, who's dinging? What's... Oh, it's the other teams. It's... Parallel to season two, it's the other teams. Yep. Shit. Don't say shit. <laughs> Dude, Tesco, value Ted, get out. Get out, get gone. Go back to Walmart. How are you gonna motivate him, Ted? New belief sign? What are you gonna do? Shut your butts and sit your mouths down. <laughs> or that. You know what I meant. <laughs> Getting work with y'all these last three years has truly been one of the greatest experiences of my life. Mm. I've loved getting to know each and every single one of you. This is not Ted talking, this is Jason Sudeikis talking. Get in the front row seat to see the men y'all have become. Mm. You know, when I showed up here, I didn't know one thing about soccer, but now, now I know at least one thing about football. <laughs> I'm just so gosh damn proud to be a part of this team. And I love you guys. Y'all play hard, play together, and just, you know. It's still there. It's in our hearts. <gasps> His piece of the belief sign. Did they all each hold on to a piece? Or just Sam? They all did! Oh my god! I'm fucking crying. <laughs> oh my god, it's the book that Ted gave him in his first season! Oh my god, the beautiful and the damned! Oh my god! Captain is Captain's band. <laughs> where's the joke? Yep, where's the... Yep, yep, you got it. Rearrange it. And there it is. <laughs> number four. Number four. We finally found out what number four was. I know folks like to say, there's no place like home. There ain't a whole lot of places like AFC Richmond either. We're Richmond till we die. Richmond on free. One, two, three, free Richmond! <laughs> we wish I was down there right now, Arlen. Michelle and Henry are getting really excited about this. They're trying to get us hyped. The fact that those two are so excited, they're trying to get us thinking like, oh, maybe they're gonna move there. Maybe they're gonna go there. Ah! Yes! Yes! Ah, suck it, Rupert! Suck it, Palpatine! Yes! I love that he's like half out of frame. That was professional from top. Not quite a dive, <laughs> but not much of a foul either. Sam helped him up the reference to season one. My God, my God, I'm just gonna... <gasps> Crush it, Captain. What the fuck? Man? What? Oh, because he couldn't do it. Because he couldn't do it earlier. Come on, Isaac. I wouldn't trust him to take an aspirin. <laughs> Shut up, Palpatine. Oh my god. You keep that dog on a tight leash. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, it's gone over the bar oh. and into the stand. What? Hang, what? The fork? What the? Wants a closer look at something. Was there a hole in the net? 
There was a hole in the net! Mike Dean's calling it a goal! <laughs> Did McAdoo just hit the ball through the bloody net? <laughs> Oh, goodness me, I hope that fan's okay. <laughs> Friday night's wings night! <laughs> what? Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> Barbara, I'm concerned about you. Oh. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Take him out. Oh, no! He's no longer Palpatine. He's what's-his-face from the Karate Kid. Don't want him beat out of commission. Fuck off. <gasps> <gasps> We've got more heart. That's what I Boo. He is every inch a Sith right now. Get out! Get out! And it's three, two. Pixar ending. Oh, fuck you, Ten laughing. Fourteen was offside. What? <gasps> Ten understands the offside rule. Offside. The goal's been disallowed. Ten. A stay of execution for I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Not counterfeit, not a reflection on you. <laughs> One minute of added time remaining in Richmond's miracle season. Do they have one miracle left? Do you believe in miracles? Talk to me, Geese. Uh, uh, Lasso special. Way too close. Lasso special. Nate's gonna come up with something. Nate's gonna come up with something. Nate's got it. Oh. Here, hold that. Hold that? Or the SB. The ESPYs? I want y'all win an Oscar. The ESPYs next year? Yeah, yeah, pass me the ball! Pass me the ball! Yes! Yes! It's the fake out from season one! It's the fake out from season one! Yep! 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 Jamie's the decoy! a fun sight, Ted Lasso <laughs> celebrating with his team. He's doing the dance! Me. He's doing the dance! Oh my god! <laughs> my face hurts from smiling! To see the fate of the Premier League title. Oh, they won the game. I bet they didn't win the title, though. Did they win the game, but not the title? Ha! <laughs> Oh my god, Ted's going to <gasps> To fans! <gasps> Rebecca! Rebecca! Whoa. It's Ussie! Mate, sucks about Richmond coming in second. Yeah, no, they won the game, but not the title. Pixar ending. I'm heading home for good, actually. That's stupid. <laughs> Michelle and Henry? Wait, what? Oh, she came to see him off. She came to say goodbye. Wearing a top that she wore in season one. 
Wait, hold on. You bought yourself a first-class ticket for a flight you ain't ever gonna take? Right, yes. That was just force of habit. <laughs> Must be nice. You're going home to your family and... Richmond is mine. I actually want to stay with mine. Yep. Yep. She's the matriarch. She's the mother of all fans. I would have preferred if they hadn't described me as the club matriarch. Mm, yeah. Called it! Called it! Oh my god, I forking called it! Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> yeah. And that is Hannah Waddingham crying. That's not Rebecca crying, that's Hannah Waddingham crying. Oh, Beard. Coach, is this nuts? Let's leave it like this. I mean, <laughs> on the whole friggin' thing, you know. Are they gonna get off the plane? I can't do this. Yeah. I don't wanna go, Ted. <laughs> But with your permission, I'd love to run off this plane and into her arms. <laughs> but look, man, I don't think they're gonna let you off this plane. What are you gonna do? <gasps> Whatever's about to happen, that's a great start. <laughs> I love you too, Willis. Willis! <laughs> oh, boy. Ah, my appendix! <laughs> Oh my god. Weirdo beardo. Oh, oh. oh my god. Weirdo beardo. Yep. Would you like to go to the hospital with your friend? Ah. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Thanks though. <laughs> She's like, you're so heartless. What a fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it's not time to make a change. That's your fault. That's so... Is it the Dutchman? Down. Love you. Yeah, you it's the forking Dutchman! To be calm Rebecca. When you found something. I don't know how I feel about that. I I I, I get it. I I I have mixed feelings. Oh, oh, it's the snow globe she bought. Try to explain. <laughs> KBPR. What? Keely and Barb! New manager of AFC way, Richmond, Roy Kent. Oh, Roy! <laughs> oh my god, Keely's boob drawings! Phoebe? Did I say Keely? Phoebe. Phoebe. <gasps> oh, Sam made the Nigerian national team. Jamie's dad. Oh, oh. What is it called? The Richmond Way. Oh. Oh. He's seeing Dr. Bravestone? He's seeing Dr. Married in a pagan ceremony, of course. You can't tell me Ted didn't come back for the wedding. Danny, of course he is too. Oh my god, from the beard episode! Not just to his son, his family. Hey. Let's go, come He's on, let's coaching attack. soccer in Kansas now. <sighs> Alright, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, he's wearing number nine. He 
He's wearing Jamie Tart's number. Don't worry about all that, okay? What do we say, huh? Be a goldfish. Be a goldfish. Yep. Yep, we're gonna close on his face. <sighs> um, I, I would say I am unsurprised. I said Pixar ending, but it was gonna be very bittersweet. And that is what we got. Pixar ending, very bittersweet. They won the game, but lost the championship. I think that was about as perfect as it could have been because it, simultaneously fulfilled and yet subverted our expectations when Ted said we'll come back and win the whole effing thing. They won the game, but they lost the championship. Um, Ted went home and of course we ended on his face. And I, I was right in the sense that they left some things open-ended, like it wasn't actually confirmed that he and Michelle got back together, but the way that Tesco value Ted was not caring and everything like it was very obvious that that wasn't gonna last and when he came home he came home like that was unofficially official beard staying was unsurprising i'm a little disappointed that they showed beard's wedding but ted wasn't there you can't tell me ted wouldn't come back for the wedding you can't tell me ted doesn't visit like there are planes you can visit and it's not like they're never gonna see each other again roy becoming head coach not surprising um i thought it was interesting that they brought Nate back as junior kit man, that he had to earn his place again. That even though they know he's an excellent strategist and coach and he has that in him, he still had to come back and earn his way back just because they brought him back. It's not just a carte blanche. He still has to earn that redemption. I think that's I think that was an interesting choice and I'm, I'm not upset about that. I'm not upset about that choice. Jamie reconciling with his dad after we saw his father in rehab last episode. That was not surprising. Sam on the Nigerian team. <sighs> I have mixed feelings about Sam and Rebecca's endings. I do. I, I don't love the Dutchman ending. I really don't. Um, I don't hate it. I get it. I do. I understand. I think it was overkill to have her say that she's both the matriarch of the team and then we have him and his little girl. Like, I think that was overkill. I I get it. I, I liked him. I liked their moment in Amsterdam and it was very much that rom-com meet cute again in an airport. Like, it was very cute. I was not 100% sold on it, especially because I know there are a lot of conflicting feelings about Sam and Rebecca as a couple, and I get that. I even wasn't 100% sure that I shipped them together. I really liked that she got to be happy with him. The only thing I don't like is I feel like there were too many hints at their relationship when, when they... I don't know. I just feel like they left that a little bit too unresolved for me, for my own personal taste. Because when they broke up was Sam saying things like, I'm only gonna get more wonderful. Like it didn't feel like it was over. And the fact that we had moments between them this whole season to just leave it there and particularly for, to have, for them to have that moment over You've Got Mail, that feels a little unfinished to me. Another nitpick is the Roy, Keeley, Jamie storyline. It irks me a little bit. I get it. I really do get it. I'm not absolutely upset about it. But it does irk me a little bit because, yes, we've had tiny little moments of Keeley having a, a, a shine for Jamie since their breakup, but they broke up, Roy and Keeley got together, and we haven't had much of a Keeley-Jamie relationship hint to me personally. I don't think that that fight between the two of them was justified at the end. Personally, I don't. I do understand and respect the decision for Roy to acknowledge that he needs to do more work on himself and that needs to be his priority. And like I said, the Zava and Shandy bits, those really kind of felt like fluff. Those felt like filler. And now seeing that they didn't, those characters didn't come back in any meaningful way, those did feel like fluff. What am I missing here? Oh, we never actually found out why Nate left West Ham. Because Nate left and we never found that out. The, I, I assume we're supposed to believe that it was just because he realized Rupert was Palpatine. It does bother me that we never actually got a concrete reason. We never actually had anything specific from him. We never had any sort of explanation of that. 
Same thing with Bex and Miss Cakes showing up to Rebecca's doorstep. Obviously, support and advice as far as divorcing Rupert. That works. I guess I was expecting something a little bit more, but that 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 was fine. We she another Rebecca took his football team and he fell from grace, so that was unsurprising. Colin got to kiss his fella. That was incredibly sweet. I don't think this was Ted Lasso's strongest season. I do think that there's been a decline since the beginning. That being said, the first season was flawless. The first season I think was absolutely flawless. And each season I feel like has been a step down in quality, but I mean like a single step, like it went from flawless to outstanding to excellent. Like there has never been a moment when this show wasn't great, when this show wasn't excellent. And this does reinforce that I'm glad they ended after season three. I really, really am glad because this show, I don't think the way that it is could have been sustained. I don't think it's something that could keep going. I think it was planned in a three season arc and it would not have been serviceable to keep it going. I don't think in its form, the way that it is, it would have been serviceable and it would have been right to keep it going. So I think, yeah, I'm, I'm still processing this. I think I'm just mentally and emotionally still processing this, but objectively, this was a great finale. Personally, I have nitpicks and personal feelings about it, but I don't think I have too much else to say right now. The Richmond way. I'm just... I'm still processing. I'm, I'm still processing. I'm still, I'm still feeling. I'm just, it was very bittersweet. It was, I just, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it. I think I'm going to call time on this video because I don't have all that much more to say at this point. We're rich until we die. I called it. Rebecca is the matriarch. I forking called it. Just had to say that. Just had to, uh, just had to say it. I just had, mm. Forking called it. Forking called it. I was right. All right. On that bombshell, on that cherry bombshell. For those of you who are fans of The Shameless, as I mentioned earlier, Sam and I are going to be going back and watching this. He has not seen any of it. So if you enjoyed watching with us on The Shameless, we will be doing it in the same format where I have seen it and Sam has not. We will be going back to that. And any thoughts that I missed this time, I'll bring it up then. We'll chat about it then. We're never, we're never over Ted Lasso. I'm just, I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm, yeah, that's it. That's it. As always, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the finale, on the season, on the series, all of the above. Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser. Check me out on Patreon for the full-length version of this reaction, as well as all of my other content, and Twitter and Instagram for other ways to follow. We're Richmond till we die.